If you're not familiar with Filson, it's the Carhartt for the 1%, or maybe top 5%. I don't know. There's probably a YouTube economist who breaks down income levels and clothing brands. So look for that. They're an old brand established in 1897 and bought out by a company called Bedrock Manufacturing in 2012 by a guy who saw potential in marketing and thought, hmm, rich farmhands, fishermen, and lumberjacks would love this shit. Probably. While three quarters of their stuff is made in a country known only as imported, some of it is made here in the USA with imported materials. Which is the good Filson. Unless you think a $125 imported flannel shirt from Filson is better than a $20 imported flannel shirt from Walmart. Now you may not know that 70% of what I do in life is pretend to shop on the internet for stuff I don't need. So now you know. And because of that, I got Filson curious a few years ago. I decided a Mackinac cruiser was something I needed in life and bought one that was, of course, too big off eBay. Oops. But through Reddit, I learned Filson has a big sale twice a year, which I bought the Filson Bell Bomber about two years ago in Paris Tweed wool. I paid 125 bucks for it when it generally retails between 300 and 400, which I assume is a sort of workwear aimed at those poor working family farmers lobbying for the end of the estate tax. The Bell Bomber is a staple of the Filson catalog, like the Mackinac Cruiser. But it comes in many fabrics, and the gist of it is it's a short-cut jacket that sits above the hips with a lot of pockets, so it's for work. And while the Harris Tweed version isn't currently made, you can still find the regular wool one, which to me looks like a black and gray version of this one. Let's assume the fabric feel and weave construction and wool thickness is similar between the regular wool bell bomber and this one. Or don't. It's the best I could tell staring at product photos for about 20 minutes, which is a real good use of my time. So let's look at the construction first. And you're like, so we're doing fashion reviews now, huh? If you're familiar with the dense weave of the Mackinac Cruiser that truly can take a beating, well, this is its cousin that shops at OG Whole Foods before Internet Walmart bought it. The Mackinac Cruiser's wool is pretty abrasion resistant, but this is made more from woven wool, multicolored yarn. And you might say, oh, like a rug. Yeah, sorta. Occasionally I have had keys poke through but not damage the pocket, again because the fabric isn't dense. The jacket itself isn't blanket lined and has a thin rayon liner that has a basic duty to keep the itches down and not provide warmth. It's actually held up pretty well over the two or so years I've had it. The wool exterior is a bit amorphous and not rigid and keeps you warm in the winter and non-windy above freezing temperatures and also makes you look a little lumpy. Think high 30s to 50s Fahrenheit, dry weather, the wool is technically known as a medium scratchy, so the collar isn't lined and can rub you the wrong way if your neck is exposed under the collar. But what's great about it is I can wear it in cold rooms indoors in my semi-fancy place of work and also outdoors, the place jackets are designed for, of course. The wool has a lot of different colors in it, so you might wear it with a lot of things or you might not wear it with anything. It looks grayish brown, but there's little yellow, a little red, a little tan, or whatever wool was left over on the Harris Tweed factory floor that they decided to sell to Filson to make a jacket out of. Probably. My favorite part is the pockets, which aren't lined either. Great for a bunch of wadded receipts, knives, flashlights, gum, whatever, but probably not leftover money. Since this is made from a wool yarn, I would not recommend overloading the pockets, because wool can sometimes tear if stressed. Now, I'm talking like pounds of stuff rather than normal pocket stuff, like probably not rocks, but probably knives and, you know, other stuff like that. The side pockets extend around the side of the waist and can look lumpy sometimes, like I said earlier. The pockets have snaps, which work well. Well, one thing that I don't like is there aren't any vertical hand pockets. So bring gloves if you don't want cold hands. The Bell Bomber is a basic style, though, and there are versions made from heavier fabric, some with blanket lining, some with the denser Mackinac style wool, and more. But fit and basic shape remains similar. And every year they seem to discontinue a fabric to reintroduce it later, so you have to buy another one. The zipper on the jacket is a heavy duty brass gold colored beast, which is probably the most durable work friendly part of the jacket. You can also zip up from the bottom without having to zip downward. I guess that would help if you get a tool or hunting knife off your belt. And as far as how the fit goes and how my dimensions apply to it, I'm about six foot, which is really like five, 11 and three quarters, 
about 180 pounds with the gut that I suck in for these videos. I bought a medium and there's enough room in this jacket without being constricting or overly large. It's not quite as baggy as a Carhartt medium coat. I think this is considered Filson's Seattle fit, which is a little slimmer than their Alaska fit. Not really slim though. And if I had complaints, I wish the wool was a little bit of a denser weave. I purchased this on sale not knowing exactly what to expect. And one day I will probably get a better fitting Mackinac Cruiser because I have no self-control. I wear this jacket daily in the winter. It doesn't have a hood, so you might need a scarf or a hat or, you know, if you're one of those dudes or layer a hoodie underneath of it like I do sometimes, or I just wear my heavier Carhartt coat. The only problem is I've had one of the armpits fabric come unthreaded. I have not repaired it yet, but I think Filson has a lifetime warranty where you can send it in. I didn't research that well, but it hasn't really been a problem. I don't have any real fashion sense, so it works well with slacks and a dress shirt, like a tie or jeans or whatever mismatched clothes I'm wearing. If I had to place a value on it, I'd say hmm, 250 bucks maximum because I can. I like it, but there's not a whole lot to it. The buttons on the sleeve cuffs are not functional, which would be worth another 150 to me if they fix that issue. That's what I based my whole decision on. And if you believe that, and like this review and prefer everyday carry reviews over fashion show, subscribe to this channel, give the video a thumbs up, comment, and go buy a Carhartt if you want a jacket you can work in and not look like a prick, like me. Thanks for watching.